Welcome to Crispy. My name is Chris Wagner, and today we're going to be going over how do you modify a data set that's automatically created by a Power BI data mart. Hey man, if you're just chilling, trying to figure out some stuff about Power BI, well, man, I got the right channel for you. This is the stuff. Like it, subscribe, you know, turn on the alarm bell. You know, come back. Don't miss any of the future videos. This is the place to be. It's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. So let's dive right into it. We're going to head out to app.powerbi.com. That's app.powerbi.com. Uh, and I'm going to head into my workspace where I've got my Power BI data, demo data mart. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to see that all my refreshes are running good. Uh, pro tip. Before you do any work in your Power BI data mart, you always want to make sure your refreshes are running properly. Otherwise, you can have some kind of challenges there. Okay. First thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into my Power BI demo data mart and I'm, I'm going to see my demo experience here, right? So I've got all of my tables here. I've got my data, right? I'm on my data tab. I can go to my query tab where I've got all my basic queries here and then I can go to my model. All right. Now in my model, I, you might go in and look and see like, okay, hey, you've got all these tables here, but none of these have any connectors in it. Well, what the heck are you going to do? How are you going to fix this stuff? I get it. That, that's confusing. All right. So here's what we're going to do, because it's supposed to auto generate all the joins and whatnot. If you create your model, and it's not able to generate the auto joins. This is what you can end up with. So what you're going to do in order to, to get this up and running is or this is what I recommend is you start with each of your fact tables. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna start with my uh, fact internet sales. I'm gonna drag this onto a layout. I'm gonna call this my uh, fact internet sales, All right? So I can always refer back to this. And then what I'm gonna do is one by one, I'm gonna go down uh, my fact table and I'm going to go by each of these uh, different key values that I have, and I'm going to create the key that's associated with it. So for example, where's my first one? Currency key, dim currency. I'm going to pull that in. And now here's something you have to be careful with. I am going to purposely uh, do something that I know crashes Power BI data marts. This should not crash. I actually have a ticket created with Microsoft. Thank you, uh, uh, Charles Webb. Appreciate that. Um, but if I go in today, and if I go from dim to fact, this is gonna crash, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. If I go from currency key to currency key, I'm gonna get this like hovering, this like, uh, this Power BI icon here. It ain't gonna go away, okay? I can even go to my homepage, still have it. I can go to different workspaces. No matter what I do, I'm gonna still have that inside of my, uh, inside my browser. What I got to do to get rid of this is I have to refresh the page entirely. Now go back into my Power BI demo data mart, go back to my model. Ah, and it didn't even, it leaves in such a state that you don't even get retain whatever was left or where you left last off or where you left off last. Say that four times twice. All right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add those in and here, let me show you again. Fact internet sales, right? Dim currency. Now, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to from my fact table over to my dim, never the other way. So currency key goes to currency key. This is going to create my pop-up. It's going to be many to one, single filter directions, make this uh, relationship active. Uh, I've played with the uh, assume referential integrity. Uh, Mixed reviews on that one. So just hit confirm. Now uh, I've got my dim currency key. Now I want to do my dim customer. So remember going from the fact down to my dimension. And the reason it shows uh, this warning here, I believe is, or the reason it was showing the warning is because I haven't reprocessed this model, uh, refresh the, the data set inside of my data mart to to set up these relationships, okay? It's so gonna just continue to go down this list and, and set up all of the various dimensions here. Now, my 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 date keys, I, I know I use uh, primary or order date is the primary key that I use to make it active. 
So I'm going to set that one up first. Then I'm going to add in my other keys that I have that are not going to be active. Remember, always going from fact table to dimension, never the other way around because I, that, uh, that produces an error, okay? So set all these up. Let's see what else we got here. Due date, got it. Uh, freight order date key, got it. Product key, then product. Product key, product key. Blood ow. Promotion key, dim promotion. See, and, and this is a, a good way to see why it's so important to have a good naming convention uh, inside of your model, right? So if you have good field names, it makes it really easy to find, you know, what dimension you're joining to, especially on like foreign keys. Um, and, and that's done through really consistent, good naming conventions, okay? I'm gonna continue to go through and add all of these things in. I'll work through the, the other aspects of my model to, to do that. But what I can do is I can launch Power BI Desktop, and then I can connect to this data model and see that this table has all of these already joined in it. Wait for it. Here we go, launching that. Go to the Data Hub, Power BI Data Sets. So now I have a Power BI, Power BI Data Mart demo. This is the data set that was created by it. I can access it through here. I can go ahead and hit connect. It's gonna to connect to everything in there. Now notice, when I look at this, I've got the tables that I connected to are available in here. And all of the connections that I created are inside of this model, right? But all of these other tables still exist. So I have to go through and add in all of those additional features. At some point in time this week, we're about to see a new feature get added right here that allows you to deselect tables on your model. So you don't necessarily have to have all of them that come through in case, you know, maybe you're using some to load or transform or whatever it is. Um, you can kind of manage that there, okay? All right, I hope you found that helpful in how you can go into your data set inside of a Power BI Data Mart and, and make changes to it, add in additional columns. Heck, you can even inside there add in roles, you can add in measures, all that good stuff can, can exist inside there. Uh, today, it is limited through, you have to do all of those changes through the GUI, so if you're one of my Power BI pros out there, use tabular editor for all that stuff. Sorry, not yet. Uh, that's something that might be coming down the road. Uh, we will definitively see, fingers crossed. Um, but this is a, a great new improvement. Uh, we're super excited that we have this. Um, uh, make sure that you like and subscribe on this channel. If you like this or have questions, leave comments down below. If you wanna support the channel, oh, do I have some things for you today? We have the Power BI stickers. We still have got these. So head over to kratosbi.com, uh, buy me a coffee. I'll send these over to you, uh, pretty, you know, a, a little package of stickers. We're, we're featuring this month, the Deneb uh, custom visual sticker. So really excited about that. Love that design. Shout out to Ben Ferry on that one. Oh, and check this out. I have got a brand new set of, of merch out there. These are the black on black Power BI Data God t-shirts. Uh, they say Power BI Data God on them. Uh, it is a black t-shirt with black on it. Both the, the uh, a comfort tee as well as the premium blend tee are available for you. And then the soon to be gone, uh, get on the less uh, bandana uh, uh, that is available out there. So if you want a less uh, Grossman uh, uh, bandana, order that now. Uh, unfortunately, less has gone the way of the dodo. Unfortunately, uh, the special effect software I use for that has been taken offline. So uh, less is gone. So uh, terribly sorry about the passing of less. Maybe we'll have to do a tribute to him at some point in time. Oops, come on. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. As I said, hit that like button, subscribe, 
uh, leave comments for to share it all out. Um, heck, even just put a one in the comments. Just anything helps feed the logarithm and shows YouTube that you are enjoying this content. So really appreciate it, you guys. Have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.